here this morning. Church, I come to declare that I'm moving forward. I'm not looking back. I'm not going back. I am moving forward. I want you to turn with me or look at your screens and, and we're going to start with Exodus, the 14th chapter. And the 13th verse is the starting point. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you. Ye shall hold your peace. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forth. Now the background on this, they were leaving Egypt and they were caught between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. They started murmuring the most. Tell them, why, why you bring us out here? There were no graves, burial places in Egypt. So you brought us out here to die. So Moses told them, stand still. See, Moses was doing what God had told him to do. He was leading his children forward. They weren't going back. So the rest of the story is Moses told them to raise the rod up in his hand. The sea part. And they walked across and bowed himself right in. We have an interesting... I would say it's a dichotomy that we have interesting place where the children of God sit today. They're not moving forward. They're standing still and looking back. They're looking to where God has brought them from. They, they're, 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 they're looking. Remember when, how we talk about the good old days? And we talk about them good old days as days that we that was so much enjoyment and we love those good old days. But I remember the days when we got had to get up in the morning and bring in firewood for my mama. So she'd have heat in the day. So she could cook. We had to go out. And we didn't have a one heater for all the house. Things got real cold, we would open the stove door, turn it on. They get heat. But those are the good old days. Those are the days we stand back and look at. Woo, I remember those days. All right, pal. We were so close. Yeah, we fought every time. Don't y'all remember that? Right. But we forget all that stuff now. We were always in each other's way because there was a full room out. But now there was in it. We fought all the time, but we don't remember that we were on the good part. Right. We don't sit in the ball night trying to wait up and see, see Santa Claus and we remember how, to, how we used to get together on the 4th of July, all the families get together. We play softball. The kids play softball. That was a good old day. No, they wasn't. Because <laughs> in between that, we had to live. Oh, we had to walk. Right? I, I used to tell my children, we had, child, we had to walk for miles to go to school. We didn't walk for miles. But we had to get up and go down to the end of the road and make the bus, <laughs> ride the bus for an hour just to get to school. That wasn't a good old day. We said, God is trying to tell us we need to keep our eyes on him. Right. We need to be looking forward. We can look back. They look back in the Bible days in the Old Testament. He said, we, they look back and they build testimonies. They, they build statues. They build things to remember what God had done. Yes. Today you see statues that ain't got nothing to do with God. All right. Got to do with some soldier that died. And I ain't nothing wrong with being a soldier that died. But we will, don't even know the names of those statues. We see people in these tents. We don't know their name. We don't build monuments to what God has done in our life. At the end of the year, we're coming real fast to the end of the year. There'll be a, a, a couple of TV shows talking about what we did this past year. We, 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 we passed this legislation. We lost this big man, this big comedian. This, these people we lost. The, There'll be end of the year stories about what all, but we won't be telling anything about what God has done. Bye, 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 bye. One day a year we got Thanksgiving, we will tell, we sit around, we bless, come together as family, we talk, we, we tell what God has done, we thank and we have a good time. The rest of the time, we don't put God in it. All right. We just go back and do things. And we aren't looking 
where we've come from. The Bible says in Luke that any man who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is the fit for the kingdom of God. Because the plow is what God has set you out here to do. You have plowing, you have fields, you have vineyards. You are laborers out here who need to know about Christ. Yeah. And instead yeah. of us talking about Christ, we're talking about, you remember when we had that, that vineyard out there by the, by the Muscadine? We got all this stuff out there. What are you talking about that? Right. Where should we have our mind, our eyes centered on what God wants us to do? The things that God has laid on our heart to do. That's the last thing most people do. Right. That's the last, we'll, 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 we'll procrastinate. We think about the things that we, ways that we can do it instead of jumping off and then do it. All right, you know, one thing a man taught me when I, I was at out on stage, the first semester was cold. And they had me in a swimming class first thing in the morning. <laughs> Before the pool got heated, got turned on to the pool. And just like this morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, I had to get in that pool. I don't care what the temperature was, if I wanted to pass swimming, I had to get in. I had to get in that pool and do what he told me today. But first thing he told me, when, when you get in the pool, don't walk down the steps. When you get in there, don't walk, just jump off in there. Because if you walk down the steps, you'll put your foot in that wall, you ain't going to get in. And the first thing he told us to do the first day, jump in the pool, put your hand over your mouth and nose, and put your head, eye head under the water and open your eyes. When we finished that course, I had one day a week. For one hour a day. At the end of that, we was on quarter. At the end of those three months, there were some girls in the class still hadn't done that. They still, they still walking down the steps. They still get in the water. Ooh, my, my hair, I, just, I can't get my hair wet. Didn't you know you were going to swim? Couldn't you get a cap or something? At the end of every semester, they came every day, every Monday they were there. And they failed. Because so when he told them, they were getting morning. Every morning they do the same thing because they didn't do it the daytime week before. Walk down, jump in the water, put your hand over your mouth, and you know, put your head on the water, open your eyes, and get your head out the water. They were cute. <laughs> After they did supposed to do that, they'd be over there on the side talking to him. And he fell, they ain't going to. They had a good relationship. I mean, they were buddy buddy. He talked, they just didn't joke all day while the rest of us in the water doing the toes. They were joking. Thought they were going to get an A out of that pool. God is telling you things to do today. God has instructed you what to do and how to do it. But instead of you doing that, you're trying to get him on something. Well, Lord, you know that, that sister back there, she didn't cook that cake when I told her to. So, you know, we need to talk about her. She, we were going to take that cake and going to take, well, I was going to eat it. We were going to take some of it and give it to some folks on the end and some food. And we ain't got no cake. Lord, what am I going to do? You're going to do what I told you to do. Instead of you looking at what you have done for the, well, Lord, you know, I, I heal people in your name. I called, I sung, I, I did all this stuff for you, Lord. But you haven't done what I asked you to do. All right, all right, all right. You remember, All right. my, I, I won't tell this, I don't care. My wife told me, <laughs> no, you don't, <laughs> that on one occasion, a daddy, a mom or dad, somebody told me to do something. Watch dishes, I think it was. And they did everything that day but wash dishes. So when they got in the bed, they got whooped away. He went and told go in there and wash them dishes. God has left you instructions. God has given you instructions. And he got he has things he wants you to accomplish. If you do your part, somebody else does their part, then God's work down here will get done. But with or without you, it's going to happen. Now, you can mess around and let God appoint somebody else to do it. All right, now. Good. Good. And you, you will not be fit for the kingdom of heaven. As we go through life, 
looking forward. See, God gave me this decision. Let me, let me, let me. These days, and I, I, I thought about this when Martha was talking about uh, having these meetings. I see you over there, I got good peripheral vision. <laughs> having meetings and, and having to deal with people. When you have meetings, and I used to when I was working, when there are problems, you get together and you try to solve the problem. And the problems of the past, well, we ain't going to do that at all. Going forward, we're going to do it this way. Going forward, as a Christian, I'm not going to lie anymore. Going forward, I'm not going to cheat anymore. Going forward, I'm going to do the God's will yeah. in my life for yeah. me. Yeah. Going forward, I'm going to praise God. Yeah. Every opportunity I get yeah. going yeah. forward, I'm going to tell somebody about Christ. Yeah. You see, it's all right to think you're doing right. But if you don't know, all right, now. All right. if you don't know you're doing what God has asked you to do, what God wants you to do with your life, then you need to ask him. Yeah. Amen. Let me go to Romans. Romans 8 and 11. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. By his spirit that dwell in you. The spirit won't dwell in you if you're not doing what God asks you to do. Moving forward, we need to let the spirit lead and guide us. When my daughter who was giving a testimony and thought maybe I didn't hear it in the back, when she said something told me, that's the Lord. When you see something that needs to be done and you get this, well, that's the Lord. Satan ain't going to tell you to do good. Right. This ain't going to happen. Right. Going forward, we need to listen to what the Lord is saying to us. Yeah. Going forward, we need to move when God tells us to move. Right. And I'm here to tell you today that I'm moving forward. Yeah. I'm putting... The strains, the, the lies, everything that was behind me, behind me. Yeah. I'm not looking back and, 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 and dwelling yeah, right. on the things that God has relieved me of. All right, all right. The unforgiveness, the hate, yeah. the hurt. See, everybody has been done wrong. All right, yes. But you might want to know, God, why, why, why is this happening to me? I, I, I don't know if Deacon has told you. I don't know if you know about it. But in the military, just like in... Uh, when you're trying to get on a football team, you have to apply yourself. They put you through vigorous exercise and training just to try to achieve being one in the number. All right. Well, as you go through this life, being a Christian, you're going to have to go through some things. Right. God's got right. to make sure that you're able, that you're worthy of heaven. Now, Satan is going to tell you, look back. Look what you did. But from this day, we have to move forward. Yeah. We can't let Satan draw our attention to what we All did right. in the past. Right. Cause right. There is not, <laughs> there's nothing I can say or nothing I can do to justify what I, the wrong that I did in the past. Right, right. I can't justify it. I can't do anything with it because it's in the past. But as for me, as of today, I'm moving forward. Yeah. I'm moving forward and doing what God has set out for me to do. I can't help what I did in the past. But God has forgiven us. When I said, Lord, forgive me for those things I've done, he said, okay. He I didn't even have to explain him what I've done. All right. All right. Because he was there when I did. All right. You may have been around the corner in the back behind the barn, or you may have been downtown in Butler, Alabama. God was there. Right. He knew, and yet he still would save you. Yeah. All you have to do is ask the Lord, forgive me my sins. Yeah. You know I'm a sinner. You know I can't straighten up by myself. Right. You know that I. 
And the biggest thing is that I know that you. I know that you healed my body. I know that you kept me when I, I didn't even want to be kept. My mind wasn't on staying here. My mind was on leaving, but he kept me. I'm moving forward, and I'm going to be here until God says otherwise. I'm going to do what he said until God says otherwise. When my name is called, I expect him to say, well done. I'm working here today and hear him say, well done. I'm standing here to say, the reason I leave, y'all don't know. Sometimes I'm so tired in the end of the day. I just, I can't take it. I just go in the back and say, you coming back? No, <laughs> I'm through for the day. Yeah. After you've driven that road so much, here and going to Birmingham, four days a week, the rest of the three, I'm just there. But I'm there with God. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my family. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize him. But I'm going to do what I can while I can. Because I don't know what God's plan is for me. But I plan on being in it. Yeah. Whatever the plan is, I'm going to be in it. If he says I got to leave here tomorrow and that's his plan for me, I'm gone. Don't talk crap for me. Y'all got to deal with it. Whatever happens, I can say that there's a monument in my heart when God saved me. That Friday night at the church down on 69 South in, in, in Tuscaloosa, God saved me. When God kept me, there's a monument in my heart knowing that God forgave all my sin. He told me that I was his and he's mine. That there was nothing that could take me from his hand. I could step out on my own. Yeah. And God was sorrowful, but he would let me go. He loved me so much, he died for me. So there's nothing that I can look back on other than the goodness of God. There's a chance, there's an opportunity today, church, for you to know that he loves you. For you to know that he can. If you don't know that today, then you need to have a relationship with God. Everything else, everything else is just one of those things. People want to wear nice clothes to church. People want to have a nice job. People want to have nice things. That's all one of those things. You know, I, I want all those things. Except for John. I won't get no rest, but you know. That's one of the dress. If you're looking forward, then the only thing you want is to please God. If you're looking forward, the only thing you want is to do what's right to man, to your fellow man, or woman. See, there are people today who spend their time trying to figure out how to get from somebody else. How to take that car of you. How to clean out your bank account. And you don't believe it, look at your spam folder one day. Full of stuff. Somebody trying to get you to click on a button so they can get into your computer and get into your bank account. My account. You know how I don't know. I was sitting at the bank the other day and it has a little thing on the screen. Insured by the U.S. government for up to $250,000 of your money. So if you got money in here, the U.S. government was secured up to $250,000. You got $250,000 and won and lose it, your $1 gone. But up to $250,000, the government going to insure it. My life is insured by Jesus Christ. There ain't nothing nobody can do to take it. There ain't nothing nobody can do to make me regret giving it to him because although you can steal all my money you can take my family my house my church but as long as i got jesus Hallelujah. i'm moving forward i'm looking at everything in my review mirror because i don't care about it anymore i'm moving forward with god on my side and jesus christ sitting beside him said that that's 
one of yours, Father. That's one of yours. That's what I call, I, I brought him in. He was hard, Lord. But I brought him in. I was there. I waited on him. And one day he said, I, I, I give up. I give up. And I give in. I'm yours. And you're mine. I'm moving forward. I'm not going to let anybody turn me around. Not from God. Not from what he had for me. Because I struggled too hard. And, and I can hear him say, well, I struggle with you. He struggled too hard right. to get me where I am yeah. now. Yeah. To have a minute, an hour of what they said, pure pleasure. Mm. And we held bound for you each hundred. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, you they, they, they say like this. Well, you know, uh, ain't nobody got to know. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody got to know. This just between me and you. Get me behind me, see? All right. Now, as, as the song says, no, get under my feet. I want to know where you at. All right. Get under my feet. Yes. Lord. Satan ain't got no sense. So y'all shouldn't have him behind me. Shouldn't have him beside you. All right. You ain't Christ. Christ and said, get me behind me because you ain't worried about it. You need to know that although you've got the spirit in you, you don't play with Satan. You don't play with Satan. You don't play with Satan's toy. With his men and women that they come around here with well, you know, wink at you. Oh, she think I'm cute. Let me go talk to her. Yeah. When you get out of hell, you won't be getting out. You won't be getting out. And Brother Hill used to say, you play with it, and you find yourself out there on that limb, and you see him cutting it off. <laughs> Satan doesn't play for it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Church, I'm asking you today. I'm not, I'm not, I'm asking you today. Assess where you are. Are you moving forward? with Christ. Are you moving forward? Standing still is okay. But you don't get to heaven unless you're moving forward. Being watchful, being cautious is okay. But why should I wait when I've got God on my side? Why should I dismay because people don't listen, people lie about me? Why should I think that's on me regular when they did the same thing to Christ? Right. My Bible tells me that they made lies on him right there in front of him. Mm -hmm. Well, he'd been out there saying he was God. And he, oh, he, he claimed that he was the king. Greater than Caesar. If they lied on Christ, yeah. they won't lie on me. But that cannot, it should not stop me from moving forward. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Again, I'm on, I might have paid with my hand, but again, I'm going to use my wife. Oh. <laughs> I remember when, when, when she was at, at, at uh, supervising, and her people that worked under her were jealous. So they made up lies on told him to her supervisor. And she came home. I ain't gonna say she was crying because she's right there and she might not like it. She was upset, let's put it like that. Why are they lying on me? Why are they, why are they, why are they lying on me? Why are they tell it? I ain't, I ain't. Why? Why? You're a Christian. You don't think Satan gonna take shots? You don't think he's going to try to get you upset? He's going to try to get you so upset that you lose your Christianity. Or you like some Christian, so-called Christian said, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to come back and pick up Christianity up, but I'm going to lay it down for, I'm going to take care of that. You lay it down, you may not be able to come right, back and pick right, it up. All right, all right, all right. Satan is going to do what he can do. But why are you looking back 
I was sure was nice when I was up there in college and mm. running around doing all that stuff that mama told me not to do. That was a nice. And why are you gloating on that? You're going to forget where you were headed. Right. Instead of you heading to heaven, you start turning around and I, I can head back to college. You know, I, I can do like some of my friend brothers did, hang around on the, on the square and wait on them goods to come by and I can whistle and some of them might need some money. Be the sugar daddy. Yeah. And you can wind up in hell. Not going out. That's hell bound. I just want you to be able to, to think on, as I said, think on these things. Invest your time. Invest your energy looking forward. Yeah. And yeah. thanking Christ that you are where you are. Yeah. We can always look back and cry and mope about where we've been what we've been through. But in the military and on, on the professional team, you have to go through before you are eligible to be a member. You don't just go to the Cincinnati, the Cleveland Browns. You used to be Cleveland Browns. And say, I'm, I'm a Cleveland Browns just because I'm wearing the jersey. They have to try you out. They have to put you through some things. Just like being a Christian. You're going to get tried out. You're going to go through the fire. All right, all right. But if you keep moving forward, keep depending on Christ. Yes. At the end, it'll be well done. Yes. Yes. I do it faithful, sir. Thank you, Lord. Come on in.